Hi everyone, welcome to Hunter Gatherer Cooking. Uh, today I am doing another field to fork with Matt and uh, we're going to be doing something a bit different tonight. We're going to be sitting in a high seat. It's going to be a little bit different tonight in the sense that we're not going to be walking around. So we've got sausage rolls. so bloody miserable all the time. May as well laugh. Chances are we're not going to see one. The other chance is Matt will miss. Sorry, he won't like that. Edit. <laughs> it's the idea is that the second part of this video is going to be about cooking some venison. Um, I'm really open to any ideas that you've got if you want to do some recipes or ask for some recipes then I'm open to that if not I'm pretty much going to do my thing and um, see what I can come up with oh, I told you didn't I say I said he was like that <laughs> this is what it's like this is what you don't really see I think we've been very serious up until now but actually Matt's a bit of a lad. I thought of that at all. No, more like an old man. Yeah, much more like an old man. We should do a podcast. It'd be a bit boring. No. Uh, that would be boring. It'd just be you verbally jousting me. <laughs> we could do that now. <laughs> so, Alex hasn't been in a high seat before. Um, a lot of the stalking round, uh, sort of Somerset where I am, is mostly row. Um, so that's what Alex and I have been mostly doing, but... Um, uh, for like herd species like fallow, seeker, uh, there are lots of pairs of eyes. You're not stalking an individual animal, so to speak. You're stalking a group, uh, and that can be quite tricky, especially when there's lots of cover on the trees like there is at the moment. High seat stalking is. I mean, I prefer to make my own luck and basically go and stalk the animals themselves. But high seat shooting is a really, really effective way of uh, of thinning out populations, really, because you can actually sit, spit, uh, like get an area where you know there's been damage done and you can set a seat up and you can actually target that specific area instead of bumping deer on their way to or from it. It's also quite a safe way of doing things as well because you're, you're a lot higher up so you're shooting down into the ground and whereas if you're foot stalking something it may be quite challenging to get yourself into a position where you can take a like a precision shot especially if you want to head on next shoot which is what we're trying to do today and high seat because the deer aren't generally looking down they're sort of milling about um, you can generally get a lot more stable shot uh, from a high seat um, to like say pick your spot under no or under less time pressure as well so um, like I say we're normally like walking uphill and down dale and everything this will be a lot more relaxed you do tend to get a bit colder because you're not moving which is why wearing several layers is, is pretty advisable really uh, but this is quite a nice little dough box for in here it's blanked off around the sides um, so there is a bit of a wind whistling through from right to left it's not that strong but um, yeah it's interesting to see what happens this evening I've, I've got a question for you are oh deer are oh the deer basically are they so dumb as it were that they are quite happy to keep coming back to the same location where you know previously there's obviously been shots fired and things like that like I would have thought that 
they wouldn't come within this area because they know it's dangerous. I mean, they will get used to the, uh, they will get used to seeing the, um, the high sea. That's not necessarily a problem for them. I don't think they're that intelligent to see something and it, it sort of recognise as being dangerous. It's, um, it's more the, I mean, they're wild animals, so they'll basically do what they want anyway. Uh, it might not necessarily be that they're scared of the sea. There could be better browse or better food for them elsewhere. It also depends how much they get persecuted at that spot because they will react to being constantly shot in an area or either by going to a different area or going or visiting that uh, area where the seat is at different times of day or a different time, for example, I'm only going there at night. So I wouldn't say they're stupid, but they'll certainly react, well, in different ways, really, depending on depending on a lot of different factors. So you couldn't necessarily say you can't go to the same seat every week if you were on an absolute hot spot of food for them. They probably would go back there, but they'd change the times of day that they went there, for, for sure. So I don't really get to uh, to talk like this to Matt. We, we, we very rarely talk, actually, apart from to insult each other. But um, if you have got any questions, then... Um, I've had a couple of people who have um, made some suggestions and we'll, we'll try and accommodate that where possible. <coughs> Sorry. Um, something that I don't think we say enough of uh, is uh, to, to try and direct people to our Instagram pages as well. So the handles will be in the description, but obviously mine is Hunter Gatherer Cooking and Matt's is Grove Game Larder. I'm going to also say the usual, if you can hit that subscribe button, that would be amazing. The followers have, um, at, at this time, it's just over 4,000, which is incredible, so thanks very much to that. But I've also launched memberships as well to help financially cover the cost of some of these trips. So, again, if you want to get involved with that, or even the super thanks button, then I am eternally grateful because these trips do cost money. So, all joking aside, if you have a little look at my website, everything that I'm doing is geared small businesses now. We'll get the deer now and then uh, we'll move into cooking it. Wow, that's my first fallow. God, it's big, isn't it? Or well, bigger than I'm used to. He who shot it drags it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where venison comes from. And that is also the reality of eating meat. But this deer hasn't suffered for long. And we'll, uh, we'll get this one processed now.